welcome back. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. I'm Evangela Charlotte Lumpkins, and this is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. Boy, have I missed you. I know it's been a minute since we both shared, but I can't wait to share with you today. I hope you're catching up with me. We've done a lot of videos on the rapture. Yes, this is part three, the rapture, and I'm excited. I hope you are taking good notes. I hope you are sharing these videos. If you can't explain it to somebody, well then send them this video. They would sure enjoy it. Yes, please talk about the rapture. Make it part of your day, <laughs> you know? Pray about it if you have to, but let's have the conversation about the coming rapture. I'm gonna do a little review. We're gonna open in prayer and we're gonna pick up where we left off. And this is how this is lived out. How do we live our life knowing that he could come back any minute now? <laughs> yes, and I'm not going down that road of post-trip, pre-trip. People are in their minds about that. But for people that I'm talking to, listen, we're gonna make it basic. How you live your life out in case it's called upon to leave here or in case he comes back and says, let's all go now. Yes, I don't know the day or the hour, the Bible says, when he will decide that. But I do know daily there are things that we should be about. Let's not procrastinate now. Let's not put them off saying, oh, we got time because you read some article about pre-trip. And then I'm saying, no, don't do that. Don't put it off because you don't know when your own life will be required. We don't know. I mean, it's like I can make my decisions now. Yeah, why we have a mind to. We might grow older and our minds be like, rapture, what's that? Yeah, it could happen. So let's get ready now. Let's put everything in order in our lives so no matter what happens in our life we let the lord know that we love him we love others we have good fruit and we are preparing to go with him when he comes for us that's what we're talking about today so a little review prayer let's get started what this means to me, no one knows the day or the hour. Bear good fruit. Others need to know that your life is there in Christ. You gave your life to Christ. Two, forgiving others. The trespasses, Ephesians 4.32. If you forgive other sins, God will forgive yours. That's the way he said it. Sow seeds of faith in the Lord. You got a faith of a mustard seed. That's how big it your faith is. You got a faith of a grape. Well, that's as big as your faith is. You got a faith of, a, of an orange. It's getting better. You got a faith of a grapefruit. How about pumpkin faith? How's your faith? That big, but with every amount of faith, guess what? There's going to be trials and tribulations. You want pumpkin faith? You're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations and struggles, but that's okay because your faith in God, you're believing in God, you're waiting upon the Lord, yes, to renew your strength. Next one, we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do. We don't see the things the way they should be right now. We don't see things with justice happening right now for us. We're not even getting a fair deal. We can't even get a decent job because people go like, with your cross around your neck and them ear, the, uh, those cross earrings, they can tell who you are, yes, and you don't get hired because she's going to be one of them at the table, always talking about God and praying with her at her lunch. She's going she gonna to say her blessings at her lunch table, <laughs> and they don't want to be bothered. Yes, I know. So we walk by faith, and then it says we are standing in the righteousness of Christ. Yes, they won't accept you because you're saved. They don't believe that you're saved. They don't think that you came from this country and you can be saved. They don't think that your color of your skin is right that you can be saved. They don't like the way you dress. They don't like the way you do your hair. But because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you received him as Lord and Savior, beloved, you are saved for the day of redemption and you're living a life in front of them, walking in love. Yep. You're not yelling back at them. You're not accusing them. You're not being mean toward them because they don't re accept you. No, you love your enemy. You do good to those who persecute you. That's what the Bible says. Next, we love one another. 
We find fellowship with one another. Yes, we do. And because we find fellowship with one another, we know we have fellowship with God. There's one God, one Lord, one nation, one people that God is going to bring into his kingdom. Yes. And our brothers and sisters are around the world. Yes. He said, tell the angels, go to all the corners of the world and bring in his people. Oh, my goodness. Why don't we pray? And invite the Holy Spirit as we pick up where we left off, how this is lived out, knowing that any day he could come back for you or for me. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm excited for this time with my listener. Father, I pray that they would take the time with your word, God. I only got 20, 22 minutes with them. But Lord, they have so much more time in their day to spend with you in these scriptures. Father, I pray right now that you would bless every listener, meet every need, open our minds and our hearts to receive what thus saith the Lord. This is our daily bread today, God, from you. In Jesus' name, Lord, dwell with us now. Amen. Yes, this is our daily bread. I know, I hope you've had your breakfast and preparing for lunch, but I hope this will, little bit of study time will be your day, the way you can start your day. Let's see how this is lived out. Daily acknowledge my behavior matters. Did you know that? That as a born again believer in Jesus Christ, your behavior and mind matters. Who does it matter to? Just yourself? No. It matters to those around you. Who does it matter to? It matters to God. Yes. You're his child. Your behavior matters to God. Your behavior matters to the Holy Spirit. You in agreement with the Holy Spirit who wants to lead you to do more like Jesus, that behavior matters. So who's your role model? Jesus. Who's your role model? Jesus. <laughs> Who was Jesus' role model? God. <laughs> That's right. It's not going to change. Over all these years, Jesus is still your role model. You said my parents helped me raise me, and they did right, and I had good coaches, and they did right, and I learned from them. Yeah, that's probably true. But now you have a spiritual life. You have a spiritual life. You have a body of spirit within you, the Holy Spirit, who is teaching you how to be more like Jesus. So your behavior matters around people, by yourself alone, with people on the phone, whether you text them, whether you email them, whether you write a letter, whatever you do, you're in the grocery store, your behavior matters because you said, Christ come into my heart, Lead me day by day. Let you teach me how to live this life, knowing that you are coming back for me. Let's do this. Here we go. How this is lived out. A knowledge daily, my behavior matters. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 31. This is the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. And I'm going to go slow. We're going to do a lot of reading today. This is important. I'm going to take my time. If you need to read it again, I'm going to jump around, but you definitely read the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You read the whole chapter. I'm just going to read verse 31. He says, but if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. How do we live this out daily knowing he's coming back for us? Scripture. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. So he's telling you, your behavior matters. And do what? Examine yourself. People are going to criticize you, call you all kind of names anyway. But you look in the mirror. You look at your heart. You listen to your attitude. You hear your thoughts, right? You examine yourself. I have to examine myself. You examine yourself because God who sees us is going to judge us by that what he sees on the inside. We may hide it from him, her, and they, but guess what? He sees us. So he tells us, first off, how do we walk this life? We examine ourselves. And then he says, we would not be judged by God in this way. If we examine ourselves and we say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I know I didn't do the right thing. Lord, I was rude with her. Lord, they were rude to me. And I just had to tell them what was on my mind. Examine yourself. He says, yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. You got a choice. Beloved, we got a choice. We can be disciplined by the Lord or judged with the world. 
You got to decide. I had to decide this. Lord, I made a mistake. I, I should have. Now he's going to discipline me like, like, you know what? I'm just going to have to feel convicted. I'm going to be sad that I did this unto the Lord, that I, I have to write her an apology letter now. I have to humble myself in front of her and say, I said things that weren't true. I wasn't thinking that, you know, your feelings counted. And I just wanted to get this off my mind to what you had did. Now we're going to be disciplined. Or if we neglect to do that and we keep on hurting people and we keep on running at the mouth or we keep on agitating and making things worse and we're born again and we're Christians, I'm telling you, it's going to count in the end. Our behavior is going to matter to God in the end. And it says, so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Bro, love, we got a choice. We got a choice to be disciplined for doing things that, you know, when your mother disciplines you, sit in the room, take away your TV privileges, take away your cell phone, take away you're not going out, you're grounded, that's discipline. God can discipline us because he loves us. Or, or if we don't correct our behavior, we're going to be condemned with the world. Beloved, that's it today. Anybody ever read this to you before? Is this the first time you're hearing it? Here it is. Don't blame it on anybody else. Your behavior, we are accountable for. And here's the behavior he wants us to have, to walk in, that represents him. This is it. Do these things and you will have the blessing of the Lord. Let's go. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians, okay? Love is the greatest. This is how he wants us to walk in or judge with the world. Here we go. If I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. See what matters? If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Three times, no matter where you are, the object of God in you is to what? Love others, not to acclaim things in this world, not to be spiritually high above everybody, not to think that you are above everybody and you got it all going on. I don't care what it is that you think. If you are not loving others, it ain't mattering to God. Here it is. He said, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. There you go. That should get you stopping right there. Hold the band right now. Hold the music right now. Because by nature, we all keep in our mind what somebody did to us. By nature, we will do that. Mm -mm -mm. It does not rejoice about injustice. Love doesn't. But rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Here we go. Love never gives up. Never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. There you go, beloved. That settles it right there. You want to know what love is? It wasn't that good feeling and that, you know, that that warm feeling all over your body and you get the chills and everything. No, no, it's hard work. It's discipline, you know. It says it is not irritable with that relative. It says it does not keep no record of wrong of that spouse. It says it does not rejoice about injustice. Yeah, she got what she deserved, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. This is the truth. This is what we're going to do here. This is how we have to realize it. 
Love never gives up. I'm tired of these kids. I'm done. Never loses faith. I ain't going back to that church no matter what that pastor says. It's always hopeful. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to listen for the word of God and I'm going to discipline myself. He says it endures through every circumstance. And I know if these kids don't move out soon, I know if my kids don't get their acts together, I ain't going to. I'm going to take them out of the will. No, nope, that is not love. It endures in every circumstance. Let's go on. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. There you go. But love will last forever. God is love. Here we go. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. Yeah, we got gifts to use it. But if we're not walking in love, what does it matter? Those gifts matter. He says, but when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Beloved, when we see him on that day, don't try to tell him how many gifts you had. Remember the the, the message we read, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Lord, we did miracles in your name. He said, ah, depart from me. You broke the laws, the laws of love. Here we go. The Bible says, when I was a child, I spoke and thought in reasons as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. When we leave here and he takes us home, we're going to see God as he is. And he's going to see us as we are. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. Don't judge a matter before it's time. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows, knows me completely. Told you. He's going to show himself up, and we're going to show him who we are and what we are made of, too. These things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Beloved, there it is. That's how we live this out daily. That's how we make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's how we make it in the rapture. These are the things. This is acting more like God in every way of your life. With every turn, in every circumstances, above against the most difficult people, up against the most difficult situations, up against the most trying times. We walk and we esteem each other in love not criticizing them, not putting them down, not calling them out on their stuff, but saying, I love you. Here's the demonstration of it. Here, if we would examine ourselves and pray right now, Lord, I've not been this loving. Lord, I have not been this loving. Lord, I have not demonstrated. I've been irritable just because when I heard a voice on the phone, I said, oh my God, not again. Forgive me, God. You search me, Lord. Forgive me. Help me be more like Jesus when the opportunity comes. And that is every waking, sleeping, breathing moment. This is how we get into. This is how we can know that when the rapture comes, we will not be the one left behind. Judge with the world, beloved. We will go with him. My God, my God. You want to go with him? Walk in love. This is the demonstration right there. All those gifts are going to pass. Prophecy is going to pass. Who needs them there? You're with God. We use them today, but not to harm each other and not to build ourselves up. No, we use our gifts to edify the Lord Jesus and to edify the body of Christ. Beloved, I'm going to go on. My goodness, I could do another video on that verse alone. I'm going to move on. We're going to do Matthew 24, verse 46. Matthew 24, verse 46. Here we go. Matthew 24. He says, A faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, that's you and me. When he returns, see, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks my master won't be back for a while? People are thinking, he's tarrying. I don't want to go through this. And I'm going to stop people. I'm going to stop telling them what I think. Listen, 
And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. And I'm going to add to that, just doing their own thing. He says, this master will return unannounced and unexpected. That agrees with the scriptures. We don't know the day or the hour when the Lord will return. He will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. Remember? Judge with the world. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It didn't say you can plead your case. It didn't say you're going to get, you know, um, sent to your room. Nope. It says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Beloved, that's not where we want to end up. No, it is not. Let's do another one. Revelations 3.16. Here we go. Revelations 3.16. And it says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. How do we live this out daily when we walk in love? How do we live this out daily? We decide whom we're going to serve every single day. How do we live this out daily? We accept that Jesus is Lord and we are following him. He says, whether we are hot or cold, I wish that you were one or the other. We can't be bland. You understand? We cannot be indifferent. You understand? We cannot be blasé, you know, as Christians. No, we have to take a stand. Stand in the heat. Stand in the fire. Stand in the heat of the thing that you're going to go through, knowing that God is in that heat with you. Yes. Stand in the promises of God that he's going to come through for you. Don't get bland. Don't get wishy-washy. Don't get complacent, you know. Stand in the fire stand in the heat stand on the side of righteousness in christ this is what he's asking you to do and you say i am rich and i have everything i want i don't need a thing and you don't realize that you are wretched miserable poor and blind and naked so i advise you to buy gold from me that gold has been purified by fire there you'll be rich and buy white garments so from now on so for me, you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment. He's selling, don't sell out to the world. He's selling, don't go back into the world. Because if you do, you're naked, you're blind, and you're wretched. In other words, there's only God, is only his goodness, only his promises, only his joy, only the things that he wants you to do. Walking in love is any payment in that. It's only payment you get from God is if you're walking in the newness of Christ. Okay, he says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together. Those who are victorious will sit with me in my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. He's telling you, here we go. Beloved, you can let him discipline you because you mess up. We do. Or you can be disciplined or you can end up with the world. Judge with the world choice. You can walk in love, put that garment on in all the situations of every part of your life, or you can deny that, get wishy-washy, play it off. No big deal. You're through with this Christianity. You don't even want to be called a beloved of Christ anymore. And you can have him come for you that day. And guess what? You're lost. You gave over. You gave up. You turned away, and now you're in out of darkness. Now you decided that he wasn't worth waiting for. So when he comes at your door, and he finds you that day, and you're not victorious, you hold the door closed. You say, Lord, don't come. It's not a good day for me. And that was the day he comes, cracks that sky, and you're ready to go, but not to where you think you're going to go. Beloved, we got to talk about this. We're going to talk more about this. Let's close. I'm closing. Matthew 25, 19. Matthew 25, 19. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven came with illustrated a man who going on a long trip. And he called together his servants. And he said, while they were gone... He gave the servants two bags of silver and then also worked to earn two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Beloved, I'm closing. God has given you a gift. Don't hide it. God has given you love through Jesus Christ. Don't hide it. God has given you ability to know him. 
Don't run from it and don't sell out. Don't get wishy-washy. Don't be bland. Stand in the heat. Yes, stand in the heat of knowing Jesus is real in a world that has rejected him. Beloved, I'm Evangelist Shala Lumpkins. This is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. Come on back. We got so much more. How do we live this out daily? Knowing that he's coming back, we stand in the heat and in the fire for Jesus Christ. Beloved, I look forward to you returning.